you know, I might have been thinking I'm going to maybe take a run at you too. And, you know, what, what would be the situation there? You know, I mean, any, any guys joke with you after, or, you know, the next day in practice, just, Hey, I was thinking about coming. To the I don't know. Do you see the game where I came out and played the puck? Cause it was right at the beginning. Yeah. Like, yeah. The game. Yep. And Hyman, Hyman was barreling down on me and I knew he wasn't going to take me out. Him and I know each other fairly well. Right. Uh, so I knew he wasn't going to take me out, but it, it helped me get in the game. But the goalie coach after that in the second year, he said to me, you know, you don't have to come out and play the puck, right? Like, we don't want you to get run over. I said, right. You know, I weigh 210 pounds. I'm not a small guy. So <laughs> even if they did come at me, I kind of probably could stand my ground. You know, not too many goalies these days are, are thicker guys, right? They're usually for fairly sure. thin for the most part. So I could hold my own. But I wasn't – I couldn't see any of those guys taking a run at me. But it would uh, – there was one – one part where someone cut through the crease pretty hard on me and uh, tried to take me out during that yeah. game, but I was, I was good. Um, you know, in that game, was there, you know, a memorable save that you had or a moment that, you know, maybe isn't highlighted as much as, you know, everybody's talking about, but for you personally where, you know, something happened or you had this moment that you're just thinking, wow, you know, I'm, I'm really living out this, this dream that, you know, every kid growing up hopes to have someday. Yeah, I think, uh, and it was funny because I was just watching a thing on Instagram with uh, Zach Hyman and, and uh, Haley Wickenheiser, and they were talking about this, and uh, Zach said, Dave robbed me from the slot in that game, and I don't know if you saw it, it was from the point right to him, and he no. one-timed it, and I kind of squeezed it, uh, and that one for me was like, okay, I'm ready to go, like, you right. rip a one-timer from the slot at me, and I can and I can make the save, I felt comfortable at, at that point, point. and yeah. then, you know, uh, Matthews has that low rip on the blocker side, and I made that save. Uh, and I felt comfortable after that too. So, like I said, it wasn't the shots that get you, but you know, once you once you get a few saves like what you're talking about, you start getting comfortable in the game. And you can finally play a little bit better. Absolutely. So you get the win. Um, you know, we've all seen it uh, on TV, online. Uh, you come in, the boys shower you down with the water bottles and everything. Um, you know, it, it looks like you're looking around. You got no idea where your stall is. <laughs> number one. But, um, you know, when, once you settle in, um, you know, talk about Brendan Moore's speech with you uh, or about you um, and, and just kind of what that meant, uh, you know, finishing out the game, getting that win and, you know, kind of marking your, your spot in history. Yeah. The funny thing about that is I, I turned to the right after they all showered me because that's where my stall was when I first got dressed in the second intermission. So they switched my stall to the other side. That's why I kind of like lost. I had no idea where I was supposed to go. So <laughs> after I got over there and Rod did his, his speech, you know, he, in the second intermission, he was the same way. He's like, let's play our hearts out, you know, make some memories and, and just have fun with everything out there. And he said the same kind of thing afterwards. And, uh, and I talked to him in Carolina after about that kind of speech. And he said, look, you, you know, you and the rest of the team made a huge memory for me. It's not something that you'll ever uh, come across again for the most part. Uh, he was genuinely happy for me and happy for the team, and he, he felt good. Uh, obviously, it made me feel good. Um, I don't know if you saw his reaction when I went into the net. He was kind of uh, – he rolled his eyes a little bit because he had no <laughs> idea what he was getting into, but that's part of the memory, right? So, uh, you, at first, you think it's going to be a disaster, and it turns out well for your team. Uh, the team played great, so uh, it was perfect. Was there uh, any thought process of, a you know – hometown bias where you know you got a Toronto guy maybe you're thinking you know Leafs are in the playoffs uh you know <laughs> maybe it comes down to the last game if this wasn't going on and you know they, they don't make it by a point you ever, any you and your buddies talk about that at all yeah a lot of my buddies obviously are Leafs yeah. fans for being around here and they always said that if you ever go in man you gotta let a couple goals in and I always used to joke around with some of the players too if I ever get in against you guys I'll you no, know, I'm not going to obviously mean to let a couple goals in, but they said, just let a few goals in. And obviously when you get on the ice, that's not, that doesn't even cross your mind. You know, the last thing you want to do is embarrass yourself and let goals in. Uh, but there was always that joke where you got, you got to let something in if you go in there and For sure. you can't embarrass everybody. So <laughs> people still say that to me to this day. I, I still get ripped on this day for, for uh, beating the Leafs, but yet it, well, I only made eight saves, you know, Carolina won the game wasn't me so right and it's something that uh you know you'll always remember and uh you know it goes down in history um Rob you got anything else uh you want to ask um you know regarding him and just the experience oh I don't know man I mean I, I have a feeling it was probably you know pretty crazy and, and pretty surreal but um the one question I, I don't know there's maybe an obvious answer for this but how for people who don't know Mitch Mitch Marner how big of a beauty is Mitch Marner because I'm sure you have gotten to know him pretty well 
Yeah, so when he came back from his ankle injury, I was on the ice with him quite often. He's yep. a, a phenomenal guy. He's yep. so funny. He just loves to have fun. He loves the game. Uh, yep. Ridiculous hands and, and just foot speed. Uh, when he gets around the net, he can make you look silly. And his passing ability is obviously world class. Uh, but he is uh, he's a great guy to have around. Uh, he can pick up anybody's spirits at any point in time. Yeah, for sure. I, I had um, Tyler Parsons play for the London Knights for a while. And so I was watching, I watched their Mem Cup run. I watched them for years together. Um, and him and Mitch were, were really good buddies. And he was always that kid that, you know, would sign an autograph or would take a picture. And um, he just always came across to me just like a really, really genuine guy. And, you know, obviously, like, you know, maybe most people just don't get that. So, you know, I appreciate that, uh, that feedback, obviously, because he is just such a super good kid. Yeah, he, he's great. And I think people like that are great for the, the sport of hockey. You know, if you're going to go and sign autographs for people and look, I only play 30 minutes and anytime anyone asks for a picture or an autograph because they like yeah. my story or whatever, you know, obviously I'm going to be all over that. I kind of moved some security guards out of the way when I was in Saskatoon, yeah. actually, to, yeah. to uh, get to somebody to just kind of talk to them. And because uh, I had a kidney transplant, this lady had a kidney transplant. She wanted to say hi. Yeah. So uh, for me, yeah. that's important. Right. So. Yeah. Anybody who's uh, super nice in the, in the game of hockey or any sport for that matter is going to help grow the sport for sure. And um, I guess my other one was going to be, and you kind of touched on it a little bit, was um, is how have things, I don't know, maybe changed for you? Like I know you mentioned, you know, going to the store and, and getting recognized a lot. Um, I know you also said, you know, you've mentioned you work with some goalies and in the community. Like um, how has your experience, impacted those kinds of things in your life you know in a kind of way positive way or whatever yeah it's been great and I was I was coaching a, a bantam double a team with one of my buddies so the kids were 13 years old and yeah. they loved it they were all in the bar yeah. watching it like Boston Pizza watching it uh, when it yeah. happened and they've all messaged me and uh, they're super proud and a lot of the hockey community in Whitby uh, <laughs> is pretty pumped about the story so it's gone a long way it's, it's really positive uh, out here and uh, for me, you know, seeing kids being excited about something like that is great. You know, it, it kind of gives them that drive and they, they want to get there as well. Yeah, it was all, uh, I asked, because it was all any of my guys talked about it for weeks, weeks, <laughs> any of my little guys. Did you see his emergency goalie? Like I was on the ice, you know, with some of our teams at Caesars and, um, you know, I, I came into the academy the next day and all the guys were asking me about it. And I knew it happened just because of social media and Twitter and stuff, but I hadn't actually watched the highlights or anything yet and I, yeah. I think I sat down at that point on my phone and just watched them right there in the locker room just like oh man this is crazy like you know obviously some e-backs get in and they don't get any work or they get one shot like you actually you know you had some work you had to make some saves you had uh, yeah. you were in one you know you didn't just go there get a little sweat for five minutes and then get the you know fist pump get the win you had to work for it so it definitely was it was inspiring and you know even people down here in Detroit all the kids were talking about it so no, that's, that's awesome. And I still get kids. Actually, one of the kids uh, I used to coach sent me an email today just saying, you know, how great it was to, to work with me this year and hopefully he gets to work with me next year. And the story yeah. was great and it, it uh, motivated him to, uh, to work hard in the off season and, and be a better player, right? So yeah. that's, that's a positive for the, for the hockey community and uh, any kid that can kind of take anything out of that and work a little bit harder and get where they want to be, that's perfect for me. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And, you know, you kind of touched on it too about, you know, going out of your way and, you know, for an autograph and, you know, just being a people person. And, um, you know, I messaged you, I, I can remember actually watching the game. I was with, uh, you know, my old buddy, Jared Amigo, who you know, yeah. and, uh, yeah. you know, we were watching it together and, and we couldn't believe it. We were so excited for you, but, you know, just the type of person that you are, I, I messaged you asking for you to come on. Um, you know, we've, kept in touch a little bit, but, um, you know, I'm sure you've had honestly thousands of people reaching out mm -hmm. to you. Um, so I, I, I do really appreciate that. Um, last thing I wanted to ask you to follow up here, you know, at, at Rolson Academy, you know, we, we preach and, you know, we teach a lot, the, the attention to details and, you know, the, the real small things in the game, the, how, how important they are. Um, mm -hmm. You're on the ice a lot. Uh, taking shots for these guys, bringing guys back that are injured and, you know, mm -hmm. really on the ice a lot with these guys. Mm -hmm. Is there something that you notice, uh, you know, a guy like Tavares or Marner or, or Matthews or whoever it may be, that when they're working on a, a specific skill, 
you know, are they working on that for, for 20 minutes, they're shooting in the same spot or they're working on a release and, you know, putting it where they want, or are they kind of all over the map? I'm, I'm just curious as to, you know, the best players in the world, is it still go back to how, you know, when, when you're young, you still have to work on certain skills and just keep evolving and getting better. Yeah. It's, uh, just talking to the guys you know, this is stuff that they've been working on for 15 years you know right. uh 20 something year old guys and they're still working on the same thing they worked on when they were six seven years old you know they're released their shot trying to hit certain spots and the one thing i notice about uh, the nhl guys is that they miss if they're doing a drill and they miss the puck they want to do that drill right over again they don't just go to the back of the line they want to get right back on it and, and keep going and that's i think that's what makes people so good is have that determination to not you know, be a good player, but be a great player. And you have to work super hard uh, in practice because, you know, you don't get that chance in the game to work on your skills. It's, it's the skills that you've created in practice is what you use in the game. So uh, these guys are picking corners or, you know, hitting different spots on the net. You know, they'll move three feet on the ice just to try and get a better angle uh, at the net and in practice and just kind of perfect everything. And that's the thing that you, you don't just kind of, you know, miss a puck in practice and go to the back they you just want to do it again and that's the biggest thing i've seen is just uh the hard work the dedication and then the perfection that they want absolutely well i, I mean it couldn't have happened to a better guy um you know i know for myself and the guys that i know that know you um you know just what an experience what i mean it's so awesome for you and i'm sure you're loving it um yeah. besides that what are you up to these days besides I don't know, maybe filming movies or yeah. or doing interviews. Yeah. Now, I mean, I'm a bit <laughs> confused what's going on here. <laughs> yeah. Life's changed in the last month and a half, that's for sure. I uh, just actually started to close a deal on a movie producer in Hollywood. Wow. Um, big time now. Yeah, kind of uh, an insider. Uh, he's got a big talk show uh, in, awesome. in Hollywood, and he uh, he's – breaking into the film so i'm going to work with uh james corden on this whole film thing and now uh, we're doing some hbo documentaries coming up and then when everything starts to go again uh there's a ton of things on the list to get uh, to get done uh i'm looking forward to all of it. it's gonna be great that's awesome well hey i uh, i really appreciate you coming on and taking your time uh to kind of explain and you know tell your experience and your story of what happened and uh you know it was great catching up with you and uh you know we'll be in touch yeah, buddy. Thanks for having me on anytime. Uh, it was great seeing you again. All right. I appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll see you. See you later.